What's up everybody? Lucas from Out Liberty House here. We're back. It's November. It's the first week of November. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Sacramento and we're going to go over what's going on in our fall garden. It's we got stuff ready to come out like this Ruse Marcha. We got some different like pumpkins we're going to pull out but we also want to show you everything that's going well like our brassicas, our lettuces, uh, different things like that. We got some beans that we're trying. So we want to show you all of that in this week's episode and see, you know, show you what's going on in our fall garden. But before we get to that, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this content. We're going to keep bringing it every week, every month for you guys. Stay tuned. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get rid of this pumpkin. We had high hopes for like a late pumpkin harvest, but you know, this thing is gigantic. It's running all the way down our garden. It's running back behind our old tomato trellis, but it just, it literally has not set a single pumpkin. It's taking up valuable garden space. So we're just gonna get rid of it and hopefully plant something else here it's early fall, so let's use that space for something more productive. So let's get rid of this and then we'll move on. It's crazy to me that this thing hasn't set a single fruit. There's a ton of flowers. There's huge leaves, but it's really just wasting space. Like it's going to continually get colder here in Sacramento. So we made the decision just to get rid of it and hopefully use the space behind us in our U-shaped bed for something better. All right, you can see I got that all cleaned up. We got a great, like nice afternoon sunspot. We'll probably plant, you know, either some lettuces or some different things here, but this is a great spot. And that's why we just chose to be productive about pulling something out that's not producing and take advantage of a nice spot. And the next thing we're gonna do is cut down these Jerusalem artichokes, uh, sunchokes they might be called if you haven't heard them before. And I'll show you them. When I cut them all down, I'll pull one or two out just to see what you, uh, see what they look like and then we can harvest them all winter long out of this bed and they're a great potato alternative. All right, so you quickly saw me just cut down all of the large Jerusalem artichoke stalks. That's what they do. They grow super tall, like 10, 13 feet tall. But what they actually produce are these little rhizomes. And you know, these are small versions of what's probably in the box. They're like a root vegetable, but they're actually a rhizome. You can see like this is where they create um, their roots and the future stalks from. And so, what we do is we just cut them down in the in the fall when they're all dead like you saw they were and then we can leave them in the soil it's really great because we can leave them in the soil and they won't rot in the soil and then so when we're ready to use them we'll like dig them up and we can use them like that and they're they're really like a potato they're actually you know very starchy so these are a couple, I just wanted to dig a couple up so you guys could see what they looked like and then you just can peel them and use them like a potato. And so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna shred the rest of them and shred a couple um, of our rose clippings for our compost. Next garden business we have is to chip and shred a lot of this uh, stuff we've pulled out and those sunchokes and some roses that we clip back. You can see how big our roses are in the back. So we have a ton of clippings from that. And so what we use is this Earthwise Chipper and Shredder. We're not sponsored by them. This is just what we use. We've loved it. It's been great. 
And a lot of you gardeners know in the fall, you have a ton of stuff you're pulling out, uh, whether you're pruning trees or, you know, cutting back sunchokes or roses or whatever, you have a lot of stuff. And so we chip it all up so we can add it to our compost and it'll break down a lot faster. Just throwing like uh, rose trimmings into your compost, it's, it's gonna take forever to break down. So this thing chips it all up and it breaks down super fast and we love it. So that's what we're gonna use. And maybe you'll ask like, oh, what about the uh, pumpkins you pulled out? You know, we knew we had root knot nematodes in that bed. Check out our root knot nematode video that we did last week. Um, so I'm just gonna throw all those away in the green way. So they're gonna go to the dump. Um, I don't wanna like introduce any potential nematodes or any potential bad parasites into our compost, but everything else has been super healthy. So we are going to chip and shred it to add it to our compost and, you know, continuously create new compost for our garden beds. All right, we won't bore you with the rest of shredding all of our fall garden stuff, but I wanna show you the benefits of having a shredder. And if you see here, all of this is our roses that have been shredded up. The leaves don't shred super well, but the stalks do, and that's just gonna break down way better in your compost bin. So I would definitely recommend if you have a large garden, if you have, you know, big rose bushes, big uh, shrubs you prune back every year to get one of these, and then you can have easily compostable material like this. Okay, now that we did some garden cleanup, I'm gonna start showing you guys through the yard and what's growing well and you know what we're doing. And to start here, um, we ripped out this pumpkin and we added just a scattered a bunch of marigolds. And marigolds um, are really good at fighting root knot nematodes. And we added beneficial nematodes to this whole bed. So check out our video from last week if you're interested in that. But these marigolds will grow here and hopefully help keep down that population of root knot nematodes. And then we're also gonna use um, some fish emulsion, heavy in nitrogen. Um, it's a monthly treatment, you know, monthly fertilizing we can do in our yard, especially in the winter here in the fall when a lot of the stuff we grow is a heavy nitrogen feeder. So we'll add this to all our beds. It just goes into a watering can. It's a really great product. And let's show you the beans. The beans seem to be growing really well. They like this spot, it gets a lot of sun. Um, for the most part, let's see, these, some of these kidney beans didn't do so well, but really for trying to do a fall harvest of beans, we're looking pretty good right now, as long as we don't get a big cold snap. And then over here, uh, we've got some arugula that we can start picking and harvesting, uh, some romaine, um, some more arugula, some more romaine, and then some borage in here just for flowers. And then actually some of these radishes are ready to harvest. So we have a harvest of radishes, um, maybe even replant those. So let's move on to another bed. 
Okay, you guys saw me cut down those Jerusalem artichokes and show you an example. Um, we've got some scarlet runner beans and some volunteer potatoes and some beets that are germinating. And here are more scarlet runner beans gonna grow up what was our Florida weave for the tomatoes. And then another box here is our curly leaf kale from Johnny's Seeds. It's looking really good. We started this from seed um, on our potting bench and then just transplanted it with some marigolds and some uh, pansies. We also started from seed. Moving on here, this is going to be our garlic and onion bed and we have a few of our elephant garlics starting to make their appearance and what we're going to do over here is we're going to add this kelp meal and if you know anything about kelp meal it is contains potash which is helpful in root development and since we're growing a root type vegetable with uh, onions and garlic it'll be good to get a good treatment of this to fertilize and help promote that and we just popped in a couple different cauliflowers over here still have some um, small zinnias and our lemon tree is probably ready to harvest a couple of these and see how they taste okay moving on to the rest of our beds we are arch trellis uh, we have some pak choy that's actually like ready to harvest, which is really quick. Um, and then this Chinese cabbage is starting to form the center cone, which will be fun. And might even try to make some cabbage rolls out of these leaves. We have a couple of Brussels sprouts here. And they're starting to form little baby Brussels. You can see right there. And then this broccoli is doing well. And we have some leftover dill. And then these are actually cauliflowers. This one probably just needs to get pulled. It was shaded out by um, a zucchini. So I replanted some cauliflowers in here. Hopefully they'll get some more sun. And then on the trellis, we have peas growing. Let's see, here's a little bit better look. So we've got some peas growing and they're starting to set little peas and we can harvest them like this, but we'll probably let some, most of them go to shell. And if you remember, we had all of our butternut squash over here and we just harvested all of those. So that's like our third harvest. This has been a great uh, plant for us the last couple of years on this arch trellis. And then moving here, these monster zinnias are still growing and I really want to cut them down to make more room for other things, but the bees are just all over them every day and it's still, you can see, it's still budding. So we'll keep them. Beth likes them when they add some nice color to the garden. And even here, more different smaller zinnia and they're budding and these floss flowers so we are just leaving all of this stuff for uh, the bees to have some late season food over here more oh speaking of bees more cauliflower and then we have some leeks we started from seed see how that goes um more cauliflower and then another one of these giant zinnias, the orange variety, and it is also still budding. So we'll keep it, make the bees happy. Um, some leeks, more Chinese cabbage. It's also looking great. And then this is an oregano, which is just exploding in here in zone nine, it's perennial. So we just cut it back, dry a bunch of it, put it in the pantry, uh, as a dried herb and then it this thing comes back in less than a month so it's a great herb in this area here's a red bok choy that we planted and then not much going on over here um, some onions i planted a broccoli rob 
and then we have some beads that just, for some reason, I cannot grow beets to save my life. Last of our beds here, the passion fruit bed, which is wildly big for being less than a year old. And then we have some bok choy, some Brussels sprouts, some more bok choy, and some different, there's a sunflower and some borage and different things. We've got a whole bunch of onions that are just spread out through here. And you can see these have been getting attacked by cabbage worms, caterpillars, what have you. And we haven't seen them, but they're there, obviously. So we've been treating with um, neem and then also those beneficial nematodes will um, hopefully kill their larva. And that nasturtium we planted one time and have never had to plant again. It's a great cover crop for um, our hose bib area. All right, that is it. That's our November garden tour here at our Liberty House. Hopefully showed you some of our garden chores and what's going on and you know some tasks some fertilizer don't be afraid to fertilize in the fall and the winter time you know those plants need fertilizer just the same as our summer you know tomatoes and peppers that we really focus on fertilizing and then just want to give you guys a tour of what's growing you know some things are looking great we got some bok choy that we could harvest some kale that's looking good pulled down the rest of the butternuts and really we're off and running with our fall gardening season stay tuned with us hit that like and subscribe button for us and we'll see you next week